we talked about this in the lecture, we have to determine whether this mobility deficit is upper cervical spine or not. And that's why we think about upper or everything else. So I like to distinguish that from the C12 rotation versus the, the rest of the spine going down. And again, we'll do that with passive test with him on his back. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay on your back for me. Okay. Good. So right rotation is our problem. And again, I'm going to support that neck. If we let him go down into extension, it's going to be painful. I'm going to support him. And then we're going to bring him up. He showed me flexion before. I'm going to bring him up. I got you. Good and relaxed. I'm going to take him to end range flexion. I've got him in flexion. Now the only joint that can really help with rotation is that upper cervical C1-2. He's fine to the left. And he's fine to the right. We're looking for 45 degrees. And so right then I can take the upper cervical mobility off the table. So now I've got everything else to deal with. So mid cervical and below. And in that case, I'm comfortable getting right into my segmental testing. So now it depends on how you were trained, what kind of manual therapy techniques you have and what's your background. But we know we have to treat this mid cervical spine. Upper cervical looks clear. From the research, we certainly can go to the thoracic spine, and I would do this. I would go to the thoracic spine, do my standard manipulation for thoracic spine, but I'm going to have to come right back up on that uh, mid-cervical spine as well. So depending, again, on your training, most of you just a basic side glide can be very effective here. You can assess for mobility, and it can become right into your treatment. If you're skilled and comfortable manipulating this spine, be very appropriate to manipulate this spine at the appropriate level, again, depending on your training.